everybody. So on uh, part two, we left off where now I was working on getting the rear radius rod uh, bulkhead designed and, and um, some of the tubes made and the plate work all done. Um, since then, I, I took some time and, and tried to figure out how I was going to run all the rear tubes to make it look right. And if you actually look back at the thumbnail for, I think it's the first or second, uh, video for this thing, you can see where um, I had a tube that came up and there's only one bend in it and it came straight down to where that bulkhead is going to be. And I ended up sleeping on that for a couple days and I just didn't like it. So I, uh, I kind of threw that piece of trash and went back to the drawing board. I did a little bit more research and uh, ended up coming up with the design that you see here uh, today. And it was, uh, I think it just looks really really nice i was kind of going for a class 10 type look um and there's a few guys there's a couple of shops and a couple of guys that have built and designed their own cages and they just look it looks so killer it was quite a feat to kind of look through some of those guys builds and 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 try to mimic it without copying it and it's there's a little bit of, I pulled from each each design, I think I did pretty well on, on the design on the back of this thing. Um, if you look, we did an actual, the original one I had in here, we had only, so this tube had a, just like a 90 degree bend right here, and then it went straight down and it really gave like a real tall, kind of a goofy look to the back of the car. So I ended up bring this bend, putting another bend in there, and then bringing it down. I ended up having to sleeve this and shorten it up because uh, somehow I messed up the bend. So this one was a little bit, hung a little bit lower. So I, I got that all figured out. But uh, the rest of the tubes were, it was, this is a big job. There was a, all these tubes have all got like a, a rolled in and angled, uh, notch on them and and even these whenever you land a notch in the middle of a bend like this and these are all you know contact right in a bend or double joint these ones are even off off center a little bit so you get a, a kind of a wonky cope around the on the around the tube because the tube actually when you bend it it does deform a little bit and actually thins the tube out so you can't just run a notch through there because it doesn't fit right. So you still have to go in and, and really hand fit each and every one of these things to really give you a nice tight fit up. And it was uh, it was a lot of work. And we did it, came over here and we tied these tubes all in. So this is all gonna be tied in perfectly. There'll be a plate up here. We still have to finish fitting this top plate. But all those tubes are all welded 100%. Then I'll lay this tube over the top and there'll be a tube kind of I did that just because of the cosmetic thing a tube that'll go straight through um and I'll have that all welded and that this whole bulkhead this whole rear bulkhead is going to be real nice you can see kind of it's all plated in real nice and it's gonna it's gonna look really neat so um now that this is done this is a big part of the car that was kind of stressing me out I had the tire just kind of sitting in here clamps are kind of holding up so i can get uh, a good idea of how we're going to be doing the rest of the car i kind of started messing with some of the paneling and things like that which we will get to but uh, for now this is this has been a uh, a big feat to get this all done a lot of a lot of time investing in it but everything fits really nice and it, it, i think it looks it's it's looking really, really good. Uh, moving on to the front of the car, we also got the dash bar in with a single intrusion bar, um, which I need to come back out. I need to fit it a little bit better. It's a little wonky in there. It's just kind of tacked in. I also decided to go with a an A-pillar down tube and I'll have another tube uh, that it's going to run from here to here and then I'll have like a tube clamp this like a, a, a clamp like this that'll come down here 
and then I'll have like probably a piece of plate that'll support the tube here with a with a clamp here, and that way this cage will be you know really a, a nice really safe race legal cage. This is inch and a quarter, one twenty wall um, chromoly, and uh, it fits really nicely. I, all, all I'm going to have to do is just trim out the stock plastic piece that goes right in here. The, all the hardware and everything should fit perfectly. It, it fit right here in the corner, real nice. Goes all the way up, ties up into the top corner up here. Um, and that's just gonna be, it's gonna be a tube that not very many guys run on their cages. And this tube's super crucial. No matter no matter how, how nice the cage is up here, even you're still messing with the stock chassis down here, which is still pretty thin stuff, so. Having a an A pillar support tube like this on your roll cage is major uh, major key for you know at least on a competitive side of things if you're going to be racing and, and stuff like that you're you're going to want a nice A pillar support tube and and with this thing having a clamp here and and supported on all that stuff it'll all still the whole cage can still come right off with that clamp that's on there. Um, another thing that I did that not a lot of guys are probably going to notice right off the bat is the Honda has their stock dash tube right here that goes across. The dash sits on all tab work and all, all that's on there. Um, but this A-pillar clamp on in the stock position is like three inches higher. It's like way up here. And the stock plastics come all the way down here. There's no reason why you couldn't have this clamp this low. I don't understand why why Honda decided to put these clamps so high up on the on the A pillar. It doesn't make any sense. It puts a lot of weird leverage. It's 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 an extra three inches away. Then when you guys want to run these dash bars, they gotta run like a weird bend in them or and then they put a windshield on it. And some of the windshields I've seen they have like it's like eight or nine inches like you only have a tiny little windshield to see through which is just miserable if you ask me so <clears throat> i did move these things down three inches everything fits perfectly now i can run i did an inch and a half dash bar that sits real low and i can run straight across and there's not much visibility loss there which is super crucial in these things when you're strapped in you already can't see a lot of stuff when you're uh, in the car and also with the with this uh, A-pillar tube, like it fits in perfectly. The dash, the glove box should still open up nicely. I don't have to do any trimming on the stock door at all. It fits just beautifully, and it's really neat. It's gonna, it's gonna be a nice, nice little feature, and I'll, I'll have a nice uh, plasma cut piece of aluminum or something in here. It's, it'll really dress that up real nice. Um, the other major thing that I'm finally got in was my new seats. These things are the PRP Bravos. Um, I opted for the heated seat side, so we're gonna have nice heated seats. Um, these things are super comfortable. Um, it was a little bit of a job to kind of get them in there as low as possible. Um, and to work with the bracketry, the driver's side is mounted to the stock slider, so it still has some adjustments up and um, forward and back. The passenger side is just gonna be mounted straight to the... Sorry about that, my camera overheated in Arizona and it's already 100 degrees outside, so I did turn my AC unit on in my garage, so that's what that noise, a little bit of background noise. I try not to have it running, but we're not gonna get around it this time. So we're gonna do a three gallon tank in the back that'll just be for like long, um, trips just to have as a spare tank. It won't always be full. I only fill it up when the, you know when we when we may need it. Uh, I'm gonna do all the tab work for the you know, chase bar lights, particle separator, um, fresh air systems. Got to go in still. I still have to do uh, the rear tube that goes over here, the webbing that's gonna go in there, and then I have to do something for harnesses, which I have some cool ideas. We'll get to that when we get to it. Um, what else? I think that's it, lots of tin work. I'm gonna try to keep this thing as, as simple as possible. I wanna do a little dash for my iPad mini so I can run my map systems on that. 
And then uh, I got my quick disconnect. I was waiting for my wheel to show up. I ordered the wrong one, so I had to order another one. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. So thank you guys again so much for, for joining me on this. Um, some of this other stuff, we're gonna we're get into the, the detail stuff, which is kind of stuff I really like doing and figuring out bracketry and building tabs and, and kind of go over, going overkill with that stuff because a lot of the parts come with, with some of the side-by-side -side stuff sometimes is not up to par for uh, long-term hard abuse. So uh, I enjoy kind of going through and, and making it a little more uh, rugged for, for long-term stuff. So thanks again so much for you guys for joining me. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I think the color scheme on the thing is going to be great. And uh, I'm going to get back to work. See you next time.